What's happening, friends? Welcome to episode 94 of the Game Moose Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Turford, alongside the ghost with the most, Drew McMillan. Hey! Hello. I did it. I did. See, I went with you this week first before Brock because Brock got very confused last week. Yeah. When well, I went with him well, first. Well, that just confused me. I got. Yeah. I'm now, very now, confused, now, man. now we've now we're flipped on. Well, you don't want to keep you guys on your toes. And of course, All right. Well, that's fair. And of course, the Brock star, Brock McLaughlin, aka Broccoli. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Uh, did you, Did you know this episode is uh, sponsored by Chipotle? No, it's Burritos? not. The it's not even remotely. They don't have anything. To now do I have this. to put a little logo on the bottom of this video that says we no. are actually not he, sponsored he, by Chipotle. Not. Here's a hot take. This, of, this is not a paid promotion. Here's a hot take of today's episode. Chipotle is super overrated. You're mean. Oh wow! Don't be mean to. to are, are we sponsor. expanding into food reviews? Is are you trying yeah. to say yeah. that our sponsors' food? Is, is not very good. Okay, okay, no, it's I'm not, not <laughs> our sponsor. Stop <laughs> saying that. We're going to get in trouble. I know, I know. Chipotle did not sponsor this set, this video or any other videos from Game Moose. Uh, not yet, anyway. Not but, yet. Yeah, if you not give now. Us, give us a McDonald's not, money. Not yeah, now. So. Thanks, Brock. Yeah. We're willing to have conversations with Chipotle I or mean, anyone else. I mean, the phone lines are open. The contact sheet on game-moose.com is always open. Absolutely. I find their salsa is just a little too... Yeah. I agree. Game dash moose.com salsa is pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead head over to <laughs> game dash moose.com slash <laughs> salsa slash salsa reviews for our exclusive salsa review section. As you might have um, noticed, viewers or listeners at home, we're recording yeah. a little bit later than usual. Yeah, it's, so. game, it's it's another episode of Game Moose After Dark. Oh, kind of. oh shit. We haven't done one of those <laughs> since like Hold on, hold on. Yeah. The sun is going down, <laughs> and so is this podcast. But the sun's still yeah. up when we're when we're talking. You just said that, even though the sun's still up. Well, it's it's on it's on the horizon. It's on its, it's way. It's dipping below. By the time it, this podcast is over, the sun will have it, set. It will be dark. Yes. Uh, I also can't wait any longer. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and squish your Metroid amiibo here oh, in front of me. Yeah. Baby, baby, oh, that's fucking fantastic. I know, it's so good. It's super squishy. I'll pass it over. Of, oh. of course, oh, yeah. with the return yeah. of Metroid this week, we had to, of course, adjourn this set it's like touching with amazing things. Indeed. Uh, of course, the, the new Amiibos, what and of course... What you touching? Uh, fake plastic <laughs> boobs. <laughs> Apparently. Jesus. You just stole my water. Good. All right. No, Good I Lord. thought this was my water. I you didn't even you get your, your own. Your delicious Chipotle drink. You didn't even get your own. I did no, get I my own. Sorry. No, man, Drew true. came and I stole it. I didn't drink uh, from it, so... That's you... okay. I keep drinking from it. I have my soda pop. All right. This yeah. is like that one time that Colin Moriarty stole the avocados, even though he said he didn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I have a lot of avocados at home if anyone's interested. Ooh. Can we have a walk party? Yeah. Mm. Uh, of yeah. course, Metroid and, Samus will be, so. be featured in the salsa review. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love avocados. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Sorry, Ryan, you were talking about uh, video games? I was something? talking about video games. That, though, so the reason, of course, our set is uh, has uh, Metroid stuff on it is, of course, Metroid Samus Returns is out this week, which we will be talking about in a little wee- bit. But first, uh, here's what's on this week's show. So we're going to talk about the Nintendo Direct because there was a Nintendo Direct this week, and there was a lot of news. Oh my god, that was this week? That was this week. It feels like years ago. That was just a couple days ago. Uh, Of course, uh, we got some news about Battleborn, which is real sad, so we're going to talk about that. And, of course, Metroid Samus Returns. We're going to talk about that. But first, we're going to sort of pick up with our conversation we had last week. Are we ever? About Destiny 2. Yes. Uh, It's been about... It's been a week since we talked about Destiny 2. The game's been out a week and a half. Yes. So we've got some thoughts on it. Yes, we do. Uh, Of course, we talked all about the campaign last time and sort of the leveling process. We're not going to sort of go over that. If you want to see our discussion about that, check out uh, episode 93, last week's episode. We go into a lot of detail about it. In fact, we talked for like 40 minutes about Destiny last week. Yep. Uh, But this week, we're going to mostly focus on endgame stuff. So Drew, it sounds like you got something to say, so I'm going to let you say it. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. So I've played a lot of Destiny this week. Um, I'm not super high level because... I haven't been following the hot strats. Uh, if you go onto YouTube and stuff like that, there are very specific strategies that you can follow um, that will give you a really good guide to leveling really quickly. Right. It's really easy to make mistakes in that process, uh, as I've learned. So I'm at about 275. Uh, uh, the theoretical cap for light level, I believe, is 350. And I say theoretical because I'm pretty sure that's actually what it is. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not 100% on that. Um the raid unlocks at 260. The, the raid launched on Wednesday, and right. you have to be minimum 260 to do it. Um, but if, you, if you're 260, don't do it. No. Uh, you should probably be a little bit higher. Um, yeah, you should really be like 270, 280 yeah, from I'm what I was reading. 280 to do it sort of com- comfortably. Um, 
I have a long way to go then. Yes, you do. I'm at like 160 right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry. So the best advice I got was hold on to most of your exotic quests uh, until as late as possible because exotics always drop higher than what your light level is. Right. Or, like whenever you whenever you um, turn it, in a quest. In fact, it's whatever your highest light level you can achieve at that point, essentially. Uh, uh, and, and oftentimes plus five. Yeah. Uh, because they'll a lot of times they'll have um, plus five mods on them, either armor mods or damage mods, which makes them really, really like really a really great way to boost your light level. Um, otherwise, it's kind of a bit of a crawl uh, up to there. Uh, everything, all this, all blues are soft capped at uh, two sixty five, which means that you won't, you can't use blues to increase your power level. You'll start getting blues that drop like at two seventy or even two eighty or two ninety. But those will always be lower than your power level uh, or your light level, not yeah. higher. So you can't u use those to boost you up anymore. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's all about legendaries at that point. And luminous engrams, which are spe special drops you get from doing weekly challenges and, and certain milestones. So yeah, go do that. Usually I'd be like, I'd be so out of this game because there is so much going on and it is very complicated. It's for a like lot a to casual explain. For me. But I've been finding myself like reading this entire week on like how to get better stuff and like what to do with better stuff. And I am totally, totally into this game. It is very, very good. It, it is a good game, uh, undoubtedly. So uh, the big news is today, uh, the, first, the thing I was doing before I came here is uh, I, I got uh, Narcats together. And we had a circle jerk, and also uh, we we did the raid. Narcats being your clan. Narcats so, being so there's no clan. confusion. That absolutely. Yeah. I'm just gonna put this out there for the noobs. Uh, you have to go to ben bungie and sign up before you can be invited to a clan. That's right. And here this whole week, I thought Drew was uh, shading me. No, not at all. He wasn't. No. I just needed to sign up. Yeah. So we we did the raid, and by did I mean we didn't finish it. I wish we did, but it's hard. It's yep. really fucking hard. The mechanic, like it's very mechanically driven, so it's it's not necessarily about like how strong you are. That's a huge part of it. It it it's more about like are you using the right equipment in the right scenario, and are you following the rules of the encounters? So we're right now we're on the baths, which is the second part of the raid. There are two more um, stages before the final boss. After that, and even the final boss is really tough and really weird. So, uh, yeah. It, it's really good. I think the raid is better than some of the other stuff that I've done so far. The mechanics are esoteric, like they're weird. You have to figure them out. But they give you more tools this time to figure out what you're supposed to be doing, which okay. is good. Um, yeah. Uh, the, otherwise, it's it's a really good time. It's huge. Uh, the, the raid is the Leviathan. It's a giant spaceship that eats planets. And it is bigger, so it's bigger than a planet, but it's the actual space that it takes up is gigantic. Yeah. Like, is, it's is unbelievable. Is Ego operating it? Ego? Ego, the living planet? No, no. Oh, okay. No. Okay. No, it's, it's, uh, so this is the other thing, too, is a lot of the other raids in the past have been really weird and for no, no apparent reason, but the narrative reason for why it's so weird in this one is because, you know, uh, so it's Emperor Callus, who's the emperor of the, the Cabal. He's the he was the leader of the cabal until Gaul took over. He had like a coup, a military coup. Fuck Gaul. And he um he it, it, it in his yeah, fuck Gaul. But he kindly let the Emperor live, but he um he banished him to his Leviathan. And so after you kill Gaul, um Callus shows up and to thank you, he offers you know, you entrance in onto his ship. And to, to uh, finish some challenges for like really really hot gear, um, and also he's completely fucking insane. What? So that's why that's why the raid is so weird and bizarre. It's because Callus is has lost his mind. It's like he's he's like he's like the Roman Emperor Caligula. He's like he's gone completely Looney Tunes. That, so that's cool. I yeah. like that premise. Yeah. So right now we are battling bathers and having a heck of a time doing it. But like. Even if you do the raid and you're not successful, you still are getting really good gear. There's still chances of like really good legendaries dropping. And yeah. So it's it's worth doing even if you're not going to finish it. And it's sort um, of meant to be do done in like increments like yeah. that, anyways. Yeah. Like most most people who do run the raids won't always do them in one shot until yeah. they've sort of had a few weeks of practice under their belt. Again, similar to other raids in like MMOs and things like that. Yeah. You don't do Ice Crown Citadel the fir for the first time in one day. No. Because there's 13 bosses and it takes forever. I yeah. do not know what that means and I do not know what you mean by when you can leak. So you can leave a raid? 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there are checkpoints. How the checkpoints work in this raid is a little bit different. Um, as you complete certain parts of it, um, you can get back to it, but you have to go through like the hidden corridors of the ship, which what's called the uh, was it the underbelly. Right. So you and those it's a it, it's a little bit more uh, work, but it's it tends to be faster than going back and doing all the other challenges again. So and you don't my want to go through those is, trash mobs. Yeah, and once once you finish one of the major challenges, it gets checked off. Because how it works is there are three challenges in like a hub room, and you go finish each challenge, and then you get invited to fight the boss. Um, so my understanding is because we haven't finished the first challenge, which is the bathhouse. Um, as if we were to finish that, then that would always sort of be checked off our list, and we could, you know, we wouldn't have to do that again. Um, but otherwise, you can also shortcut to it through through the bowels of the the Leviathan, which is kind of cool. The bowels. So now I'm a level twenty. How am I going to get to raid ready? Okay, um, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> start doing milestones. Pay attention to what the milestones are. Um, those will, will, will give you a lot of great gear. They'll help drop legendaries. Now, if you don't know how to lo- how to see them, you just go to the director and then hold down the L2 or the, the left trigger. That's right. And they, they sort of detail on the left side yeah. what, the, what you're supposed to do. Yeah, so do milestones. Um, the other big one is uh, uh, do publics, public events. Public events usually drop really good stuff, especially if you can get mm. the, the public events to to uh, turn into heroic public events, mm-hmm. in which case you have to do very specific things depending on what the event is mm-hmm. um, to get it to uh, sw- become a heroic event. And then your odds of getting exotics and legendaries go up even higher. Um, you can just grind out Crucible too, which will... Like your boy did over here. Yeah, you'll get you'll get good gear doing that. Um, those, are, those are the most obvious ones, and um, and then doing like adventures and stuff like that. When you hit 265, that's when you um, you want to start doing. That's when you start want to start doing some like uh, some different stuff. Um, you can also do strikes before then too. Yeah, um, and I mean you want to do probably strikes more once you get to 265. Yeah, doing the strikes. That's like that's going to be one of your milestones. F- f- finishing so many um, uh, uh, strikes, uh, so, so many strikes in a playlist. Finish so so many crucible matches. All that kind of stuff. Uh, the other thing too is once you hit 265, that's your time to take all those tokens and stuff that you've the the that you've been collecting from the different planets and turn them into the NPCs there to get to get gear because that's that's where you'll start getting really high level gear as well. Wow, um, I've been giving wait those till away, you like I've been giving away my phone number lately. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. That's a problem. Also, don't give away your phone number to strangers. Uh, wh- but how else will they? Uh, I was going to say at three in the morning. Yeah. That's how you get Cosby, my friend. That's oh. how you get Cosby. Yeah. Be safe. Right. Practice safe interaction with people. Jesus. Yeah. Relationship boost. Uh, pick of the week, right there. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's your free advice. Just you know, mm. be be safe. Mm. You know. Destiny and dating. A yeah. whole new podcast. Yeah. If you're gonna meet somebody like for the it. first time, meet them in a public place so they can't cause be you. I mean, why do you think mm. people just walk up to you? Would destiny a and dance space with you? really stop that though? You have to be aware wherever you are. That's true. That's true. Keep an eye on your drink. Don't leave it unintended. These are all good pieces of advice. Yeah. We're being deadly serious here. Deadly serious. Like Destiny. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, I have played... Uh, also, I played the uh, the Trials with uh, some of my friends in my uh, uh, clan. Trials of the Nine. Trials of the Nine, which is the replacement for Trials of Osiris, which is like the super hardcore um, uh, competitive mode. That's you. You're it, it, a super hardcore PvPer. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, we probably could have done well if we had sort of played into what are the established strategies for the map and we didn't do that. So one of the things that happens is when you start Trials of the Nine, you um, your equipment gets locked. You can't change it right. at all. Uh, and th- you'll notice if you go play Trials of the Nine right now, everybody's playing with a Mita multi-tool. Yep. Everybody. Because <laughs> that current map is a lot of like mid and long range, which are well suited for... Um, for uh, uh, scout rifles. Now, to be fair, I should point this out as someone who does a lot of PvP in Destiny. Every map, people are doing that on every fucking map right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Mida is pretty fucking good. Uh, there are a couple other really great weapons out there. I really like Origin Story, which is a really solid auto rifle. Um, and there, there are a few others out there that, that people are really sticking to. But there's no like, there's no one standout like, oh, like you always see yourself getting killed by the same shotgun or something like that. That's not happening as much. Uh, but anyway, back to Trials of the Nine. So we got the shit kicked out of us. Uh, we lost our first match, and we went, okay, fuck this, and went <laughs> and took a break. But uh, Trials seems really cool. It's it's not my favorite thing to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm really curious to sort of, like, 
see what the social space is like and stuff like that because there's a social space for this one as well. I read you only really have to get one victory. You only have to get one victory to get to the social space. Right. Uh, and then there's like one vendor there and it's in space or some weird alternate dimension and it's really bizarre. You also have to do that in order to get the platinum trophy uh, because yeah. there is an achievement lock to going to I that I think space. I've unlocked like two achievements this game. <laughs> yeah. This is not an achievement hunter's uh, achievement hunter's game. I don't game know. How, game. Yeah, no. but once you like, once you start grinding out stuff, trust me, you'll get them quickly because mm -hmm. I, ha I have almost all of them right now. That yeah. doesn't surprise me, Ryan. But to be fair, you ha in order to actually get every single one of them, you basically have to roll three characters. Mm -hmm. Like have three characters at max level. I was thinking about switching and having another character. Yeah. I want that fire guy. Who has the sword all the time. You mean a warlock? Sure. AKA the best class. Uh the the the, the Dawn something or other. Even though the Dawn Blade, by the way, Dawn is Blade. my least favorite specialization for mm. warlock. Interesting. I I actually mm. like the arc one a lot more than I, I did at first, especially for PvP, because it just wrecks people. I really like the it's, Sunbreaker. I'm I I I rock the hammer bro quite a lot. Yep. That's my favorite. You're being Thor. I'm yeah. just a hunter with my staff. I don't know how to change it, so that's what I'm well, stuck you, with. You have to find and unlock them. You'll get like um, special items, and the items will then have like a little quest attached to them, like kill X number of dudes in a certain way, and then mm. it'll tell you, okay, go to the map and go do your quest. To you got to go them. back to the shard of the traveler, bro. Yeah. Oh, I've got a new emote that lets me play dead, and that's real fun. That's I fun. like fucking cool. with people online of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Drew caught me sleeping the other day when I was playing. Yes, yeah. I did. That was fun. I'm waiting yes. for that 30 second clip to go online. Oh, it's coming up, don't worry. Yeah. yeah. Sleeping. Yeah. 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 Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for only 30 seconds? Yeah, pretty much. Well, like, that's how long the clip I mean, is. I, 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 he was doing it for a lot longer. Yeah, yeah good point. I'm, I like being yeah. in and out, right? I'm efficient. Speaking of in and out segue, let's talk about Crucible. Yeah. Let's talk about our next sponsor, mm -hmm. In and Out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't have In and Out. We don't have In and Out. Come to Canada, In and Out. Please. Really want you to. In and Out. In and Out. Do we though? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you had it in there? Yeah, I don't the, remember being very good. You're yeah. a fucking idiot. I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> There are two kinds of people in this world: people who like In and Out and people who don't get it. Hmm. So we know which one Brock is. Sorry, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, but you also like Jack in the Box, though. I do not like Jack in the Box. <laughs> <laughs> See, at least you passed the first test. I don't know, like any restaurant where you can buy both a hamburger and a taco on the same menu. But they're on. not good. I, yeah, that sounds awful. Yeah, no, it's why great. would you want both those together? What about Sonic? I Sonic's okay. I never had yeah, Sonic. Yeah, Sonic's okay. No. Yeah. What about Whataburger? I don't even know what the fuck you're talking Whataburger's about. Whataburger is real good. Yeah. Wahlburgers? No, no, no good. thanks. Okay. No, no hey, thanks. do you want to pay twenty dollars for tater tots? Yeah, yeah, you no. can. Yeah. And be served by Donnie Wahlberg himself. I'll give you twenty bucks not oh. to be served by Donnie Wahlberg. Fuck you, I love, I love Donnie. Okay, he's my favorite Wahlberg. Oh. Yeah. yeah, really? He's pretty good. Mm. You seen Band of Brothers? Yes, I have. Yeah, it's good. Yes. He's good in that. Mm. Uh, anyway, Destiny. <laughs> so Destiny. Here's the deal. Uh, I'm writing a review right now because I wanted to wait until I at least played the raid. Yep. There's no way in hell uh, I'll be able to write my review after I finish the raid because I'm not sure if I ever will. It's really hard. I know, and, and, and honestly, you not, shouldn't handcuff yourself to that either. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's not like 100%. Like, I feel like I've got a really good cross-section of what the game is now, mm -hmm. uh, having done all of those things, having at least experienced those things for multiple hours. You know, like I've played lots of hours of like public events and uh, quests and adventures and... Uh, uh, the, the raid and trials and all that kind of shit. So, well, I guess maybe an hour with trials. but whatever. Pretty much everything you can possibly try. Yeah, so I've, I have a pretty good cross-section of the game. So I'm going to go out here and I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I'm going to give it a score. Are you ready? Yeah. Nope. No, you're not ready. I'm ready. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's do this. Destiny 2 is not a perfect game, but by no means is it the, the trash fire that Destiny 1, when it first launched, was. Uh, it's obviously, like, it's got some problems. We've talked about, like, getting kicked a bit. Yep. The, there's like the if you get Weasel, the air code Weasel, and there are a few other ones that are floating around quite a bit. It's still like the servers are 100 percent stable, so that's a knock against it. I've but still never seen that error message ever. <laughs> really, no. I've, I've seen quite a few. Yeah. Of them. Uh, I um, I really enjoyed the story, even though it's got some huge problems and some giant plot holes. Uh, I.e. Why don't the Vanguard just go to the Shard of the Traveler and get their light? Like literally, hundreds of other Guardians they've met have. Like they're like, 
oh, hey, Guardian, what's up? Well, I really wish I had my light, but, but I'm sad. But in the context of the story, you're the only one they've met that has their light. See, there. that doesn't make any sense because in the context but, of the story, you go to the farm and there's 40 yeah. fucking Guardians there. Yes, but... They all have their light. You obviously have never played the story mode in an MMO before. Right. Like Final Fantasy XIV, like Stormblood, the you're the only person yeah. to them. Uh, so that's... I don't know. I really wish. But they that's could have a dumb thing that. to do. Like I feel like an M- like an MMO story should like write around that. But yeah, they've always like, they've always every MMO story not or shared one. game even like uh, the division was the yeah. same way too. Like, it, yeah. with it, its story. It, 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 I'll just say this: it doesn't make it good. Uh, the, so the, the narrative is better. It's probably better than some of the other narratives in some of these other MMOs yeah. in terms of how it plays out. Its arc is quite good. It feels um, more like Halo than than Halo does. Oh my though. god! Yeah. It is Halo. Yeah. It feels like Halo. It certainly left us wanting more, which is good, but it also explains some stuff, which is good. You know, uh, the world is different now. Um, you know, the the traveler is alive. The, the you know, the, it's you know the the tower. Well, not the tower, but you're on the wall again, and th- there it seems to be, you know, progressing. And like the lore is in the game, and you can learn about. You stuff don't have to go to Bungie.net to go look at Grimoire cards anymore. No, you don't. <laughs> Oh, uh, if you're really into it, you just you have to go finding it. You have to find the scannables and, and read the things. But it's all in game, which is what people ask for. Thank God. Nobody expected them to have somebody like reading an encyclopedia while you're playing the game. But but at least you have an opportunity if you want to learn that stuff. You can. Yeah. So uh, there's that. I mean, that's really great. The gameplay itself is fucking so tight. I mean, mm-hmm. we knew that the last time around. The minute to minute shooting gameplay was amazing, and all they did was make it better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They in some ways they tweaked it, in some ways they completely rebuilt it. Like in terms of like like the whole the the weapon dynamic between power weapon, kinetic weapon, energy weapon, um, how the armor works, how the, you don't lo- level up weapons anymore, all that kind of stuff uh, really leads to a really good experience. The game is rewarding. There was, I mean, that's what Luke Smith said about the loot cave. He said, like, the problem with the loot cave wasn't the loot cave. The problem with the loot cave was people didn't feel the game was rewarding enough. Like, you played the game and you didn't get enough shit out of it. That's why people went and stood in front of a cave instead of actually playing the rest of the game, right? Yeah. You know, if you got more shit by doing something really boring and menial, then why is it you don't want to do the exciting stuff? So they made that, like, you get lots of engrams. They drop lots. There's a lot of variety of items and weapons. It's really cool. Um... I like the new shader system. I know some people don't. Uh, I can tell you this. I spent about 20 bucks on silver just to see what would happen. Yep. Don't do it. That's my advice. It's not worth it. I was going to say, yeah, because like when I was looking at the silver market, be- the main reason why I don't like the shader thing is because of the silver market, because you're paying for items that are consumable with real world dollars. Yeah. I'm, but the, the reality is that you get just as many shaders doing like hard things, like like doing strikes doing the nightfall, doing the the raid Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, and just leveling up, you'll get that stuff anyway. You'll get bright engrams by leveling beyond level 20. Every time you you, you quote unquote level up after 20, sure, you don't go to 21, you just get a bright engram. Yeah. And then you can go use that to get shaders and ships and stuff like that. So it's all, you don't have to spend money. And when you do spend money, I found that the stuff you get isn't isn't that exciting. It's just like, well, I'm, I'm... this feels comparable to just the shit I've been sitting on for a long time. Yeah. So why why would I go out of my way to go get it? Also, there's a chance even with the, like when you get by bright engrams, you're going to get stuff you might already have. Yeah. Like that, that's, you always run the risk of that too. Yeah. So, you know, I, it sucks that they're consumable, but whatever. I mean, I haven't really, I haven't found that to be like a hindrance to my enjoyment of the game. No, and I actually d- don't think so either. Like I, I was upset at first. But now, yeah. now that I've sort of spent more time with the game, that's something that bothers me a lot less now because I have so many fucking shaders in, yeah. in my inventory. I'm like, I can't get rid of these things. So, I, I will just keep yeah. making every new ship I get watermelon color because that's just what I do. Right, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so you, you, don't, you don't have to spend money on this game to have a good time or even to get cool-looking shit. You'll get tons of cool-looking stuff just by playing the game and doing the higher-level challenges and, like, the end game stuff. Um... And, and again, you don't have to be committed. Like, you don't need to get six people together to do a raid to get that stuff, right? You don't need to get three people together to do the Nightfall. You can still do public events, still give you tons of stuff. Doing Lost Sectors still gives you great stuff. Um, playing just the normal straight play- playlist will give you lots of great stuff. You know, um, just going out there and playing the game, you'll you'll get tons of great stuff. So all, all of that together, all of that, when, when I put all the positive, like, do I want to keep playing this game? Did I have a great time playing this game? The answer is yes to all of those questions. Does it have its problems? Absolutely it does. But, you know, it's no Mass Effect Andromeda. 
Yeah. Uh, so or even no, Destiny One, yeah. the closest example to this. Yeah. So I would give this game because of the few drawbacks. Uh, again, some of the problems with the narrative, uh, very minor ones. Uh, some of the problems with um, connection issues and stuff right like like that right now, which make it sometimes very unenjoyable to play. That some of that stuff makes it really frustrating. I mean, but of course it's frustrating because you want to play the game. Um, I'm giving this game a 92. <gasps> a 92. 92. That means it's amazing. Out of 100. It, it is an amazing game. If you were to ask me, Drew, I love first-person shooters. Should I play this game? The answer is unequivocally yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You should. You should. I'm oh, sorry. I almost spilled. I got so excited about Destiny 2. I almost spilled. Look what it did to you. Soda. Well. Yeah. I would have yeah. ruined my pants. So. It would have would have been worth it. My pants would have been a little wetter than they are. Now that you've wrapped all that up, Drew. <laughs> Jesus I kind of want us all to have final thoughts as well. So, bro. Yeah. Do you want me to go first? Do you want to go first? No. Um, Final thoughts on Destiny. Even though you're still playing it, you're still early, a lot of your earlier than Yeah, I just finished. I just wrapped the story, so I'm level 20 And now, you didn't so have I'm a chance to talk about that last week, so I won't I haven't even used the Sparrow yet. I don't even know how to use the Sparrow. Uh, I hated the story. I had no idea what was going on. I could have lived without it. I hated every single car scene <laughs> I had to do, except uh, for the one that felt like the ending of Halo 2. Yeah. That was yeah. literally like a rip. It was great. I know which one you're talking yeah, about. It's br- amazing. Yeah, the bridge stuff. Yeah, that was great. Uh, I hated everything else um, with the driving. Every cutscene, I was like, "What? I, who the fuck are these people? They're whiny and they're annoying. And then they said bye to me at one point, And then they came back like four minutes later and everything was fine. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, loved it. Loved the game. It's really fun. I'm having a great time playing with people. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, it's like really. So, really, so it, it reminds me so much of Halo Three, and it's like what I've wanted in a shooter for a long time. Nice. So again, that's this might have all you might have already answered my question, but being the more noobish person to Destiny because mm-hmm. you didn't really spend too much time with Destiny One. No, I did not. So for not for people who didn't pick up jump into Destiny before, do you think like it would be a worthwhile purchase for them? You yeah, think? absolutely. I think it's yeah. a great purchase, especially like. I, uh, there's so many games coming out, but this like definitely is taking up a lot of my time, and I'm liking a lot more. I mean, if you like the like shooters that Xbox used to put out back in the day, this is like this is up there. Excellent. It's perfect. Nice, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it 94. Yeah, that's, uh, that's 94. That's the title of the episode today. But you, but you hate sto- but you hated this I, game I do. story. You still give it 94. That, that's how much he liked the yeah. game. Though. The yeah. game was so much fun that he, he liked it care. in spite of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, def- I'm gonna definitely buy the expansion pass. Yeah, for sure. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about it too. Yeah, I, me too. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to keep coming back. But in a way, I'm glad we kind of wa- we all we all waited on that mm-hmm. because uh, again, the games really had a lot to prove to to all of us mm-hmm. if we were still playing it. I'm I'm definitely out of the three of us. I think I'm playing it the least now. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I I still think it's a game worth your while. I said this before last week, and I'm going to say it again. Um, even if I just played up to level twenty and then did some of the stuff, some of the end game stuff. I would have been happy with my purchase. Mm-hmm. So even if I don't, even I know deep down that even if I don't go back to this game for a while, I I, I still think it was worth my money. So ultimately, yeah. I feel as though it is a good value. Um, I did have a little more um, problems with some of the, the 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 grinding stuff, especially strikes. I'm just not really impressed by strikes this time around, which bums me out. I also don't like that you can't pick them. Mm-mm. Yeah, I really don't like that. Like, as, and as a matter of fact, strikes are the things I've played the least. Yeah, because... Um, which is interesting. But when you have to grind the, the strike playlist to get gear, you're just like, well, why do I keep getting the inverted spire over and over again? Because yeah. I hate this strike. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just... It, I'm really sick of the ass. inverted spire. It, it, it was also the nightfall this week, so I'm extra uh, sick of it. Is that the small map and it's like circular? No, the that's the that's the strike that was in the beta. Yeah, uh, that was the one that like after you finished the little story section in the right. beta, that was the thing you could play. So as strikes are like they're only in a playlist up in the top left hand corner. They used to be on the maps, but they're not anymore. And it's just random which one you'll get next, mm. which yeah. means that like I I think there might even be like one or two strikes I haven't played yet. Yeah. Um, but uh, like you could in theory get stuck playing the same three ones and I've so the inverted spire was the one in the beta yeah. so that's the one everyone's played to fucking death yeah like mm. uh, I told the story on last week's show that I had done 12 strikes in a row and 11 of the 12 strikes were the inverted spire holy mm. fuck that should not happen and the only other one was uh, Lake Shadows which is the PS4 exclusive one which also isn't that good yeah, otherwise there's only that. four there's maps right well there's more there's more strikes but there's mm. only like four PvP maps oh yeah, okay yeah, so strikes again. I, I that's the content I wanted to like, 
And it's the content I like the least, I think. Because, again, I actually really like Crucible. I know a lot of people don't like the changes of going from six people in per team to four. Four, yeah. But I do feel like it adds a, a level, level of metagaming that wasn't there in the first game. I haven't or wasn't noticed, there as much. I've noticed a huge difference between the the 6v6 and 4v4 at least not i i don't feel like i'm missing anything yeah like i don't feel yeah. uh, i don't feel i feel like it takes away from it i just feel like when you get to the more competitive play like i i feel like it's actually a lot more balanced um and and, and that's the reason i like overwatch so much the reason i like overwatch is because of the the meta the overwatch meta game and yeah. you're starting to see that develop in destiny 2 which is what i like about it um yeah. so i mean if i was to rate destiny 2 i'd probably go a little bit lower than than, than both you guys i would probably give it an 8 2 um, simply because I don't know, I don't feel like the the end game is really pull, like pulling at me to come back to it, like the way I, w- I would have hoped it would. And the end game is just the most important part of it. And mind you, this is also it's so tough for me because uh, to find a strike team to uh, like uh, sorry a fire team to do uh, night, balls night balls or or, or raids. raids. Like yeah. again, I've had such a hard pr- time finding people, and when I do find people, they just end up leaving after ten minutes. When one of my other fire team members dies, or someone says something vulgar, and on yeah. the and everyone leaves, like it's been a really toxic environment playing with people randos. who like rando is like not playing with your friends, and I, that's a big miss for. Yeah, so I've been fortunate that I've been able to play with a tight group of friends. We all played a lot <laughs> of Destiny One together. We've been friends for twenty plus years, so like it's a group of people that know each other really, really well. Um, and that's that's been exclusively my experience playing that game. I have not played with any randos right, right now. Um, also, there's the guided games thing, uh, which is only in beta right now. They're they're still experimenting with it, and, and it's only for Nightfalls. It's not for the raid, which yeah, is going to happen I, at some point. I and I have not played with it at all yet. We considered just giving it a try. Like it was two of us were on one night. It was like let's try it out, but we um, we haven't got around to, to trying it. Out I before. tried it out, but I couldn't find a game. Ah, so that sucks. That's fun, yeah. but and and maybe it's just the time I'm playing, or for whatever reason, I, it's just I don't know a ton of people are playing this game on PS4, which is bizarre to me, because yeah. um, I had sort of expected the opposite. When that's, we, that's another thing is join a clan if you can join a clan, because mm-hmm. uh, you get you get clan XP and you get special rewards for for that stuff as well, right? Which is good. Yeah, yeah. So th- that's why, like, I, I I again I feel the same way about a lot of the elements as you guys, but I do feel like it is a little bit lower in quality. But I still recommend it to anyone who likes shooters. Leading up sure. to this, I was like really craving to play the division again. Yeah. They don't really talk about. It. I love the division. I thought it was awesome up until the end game. I, w- I was the and same this way. This kind of this kind of like you know scratch that itch for me. Yeah. Which is very exciting. There's like just so much more to like collect and do and stuff. Yeah, cuz I mean the the end game in the division was way worse than this. Yeah. You just go grind the dark zone for fucking 20 hours. Yeah. Have and there fun. only seemed like there was like four different guns to choose from, like yeah, there, there's definitely a lot more, I, but that's what it feels like to me. Like you got extra there's upgrades. So many different things and you got extra upgrades for the same guns and you're mm-hmm. like come on man whereas in destiny yeah like not only that but the exotics have their own each each one of them has their own unique features that are just mm-hmm. unique to that weapon which is kind of cool yeah so this this week will really determine what i think about destiny that i'm in the end game yeah i'm gonna try something like the nightfall which is on tuesday right I think it resets. It on resets Tuesday. On, on Tuesday, so um, it'll be yeah. a different. It'll be a different map. It won't be inverted spire, and it'll have a couple of different things. So right now, like uh, the right now in the nightfall, for example, there's it, it has prism, which means that like rotating the different elements to to like it was like quadruple uh, the the damage or something like that. So you'll see like the you know, like solar energy envelops you or whatever popped down on the right hand corner. And that's to let you know that um, that's whatever the burn is. That's whatever the strongest element is at the moment. So that means that you do double or quadruple damage with your your elemental weapons or your abilities that, that are key to that one, but same thing to you. So mm-hmm. you receive that sort of like enemies that use that elemental damage on you. You'll also get that much. Gotta watch uh, out, man. That, yeah, so, you know. Uh, m- the one thing I'd like to see them do is just if you're gonna if they're gonna do prism, put an icon. Instead, you have to look to see when it comes up, and if you happen to miss the message, then you don't know. Mm-hmm. And like it really, it it it's not that much more work to just put a little icon to let us know what the burn is. Um, and who knows? I'm I'm not sure. I think they've announced what it was what it's gonna be for next week, but I can't remember. And they already they already announced it. the strike because yeah. there was a big calendar that yeah. was all the events for the month. But they like, like, they, like they already changed what the special properties were for 
the strike this week. It, w- it wasn't supposed to be Prism. It was supposed to be something else, but they changed it to Prism at the last minute. Yeah, and I think that they'll probably do something similar yeah. with the next one, but at least we kind of know. I think, I can't remember off the top of my head what strike it is, but we already know what strike it is, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think we're all, the the, main, the bottom line is we're all impressed with this game. Honestly, if you've been on the fence about Destiny, I mean, go play it because it's yeah. really good. Yeah. Like we all, we all would recommend going to spend your money on it. And we're coming from three different angles too. Because again, mm-hmm. Drew Brock, you're the newer Destiny player. Yes, I, I am. I'm the player who played Destiny but couldn't get into it, and you the character who got really into Destiny. Yeah. So I yeah. think we've got it across. I'm the playing board. with a lot of noobs. Like we're all Destiny too. Like this is the first time, and they love it. Yeah. They think it's great. Yeah. What's Capri think? Does he like this game? Yeah, he li- really likes this game, but we're in the same boat. We have no fucking idea what's going on. Right. But yeah. it's like, shoot, 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 have fun. Woohoo. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I mean, and if there's you're having something time cool doing with that. Anything, yeah. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, so let's move on because we've talked about Dusty for um. 35 minutes and we got a million <laughs> other things to talk about. Do we ever? Because you played some other video games. I did play some other video games, but I want to kind of hear did you guys play anything else besides Destiny this week, either one of you? Fuck no. Not, huh? not a single guy. I don't think so. Cool. I got lots of games to talk I, about. I, I basically oh. like. I get home from work, make dinner, watch like an hour of TV, and then play Destiny until two in the morning. That was my week, like every day. I, I tried playing Maze, which came uh, on PS4 and Xbox, and it ran so horribly. I uh, it had a creepy like, promptly there. deleted it. That corn game. Yeah, and I it I did not find it funny. The game thought it was a lot funnier than than you did. Then I, I didn't. I laugh at anything. I told you, man. The games with talking bears are just the worst. Mm. The, that there's that there's Naughty Bear. Come on, man. Naughty you can't Bear win. was fucking. Awful. Was that for PlayStation? Oh, it was on PlayStation games. 3 yeah. and Xbox 360. Yeah. yeah. It was not good. It was yeah. not good. And then they really the best part about Naughty Bear before we move on is that Naughty Bear released a game of the year edition. Mm. Because it won no game of the year once. Yeah. But it was just like they had to make this fancy version that include the DLC that made the frame rate more than 10 frames a second. Which wow. was fun. Yeah. Bad game. Yeah. Yeah. Bad not game. Good. All right. So I mean, for the most part, again, up until a certain game. Launched this weekend on Friday. Uh, I was uh, pretty much in the same boat as you guys playing Destiny. But there's a little game in front of us called Metroid Samus Returns. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it came out on Friday. Um, I've been playing it pretty much ever since. Uh, it is everything I hoped it would be. Excellent. As far as 2D Metroid games, I mean, it feels so much like Super Metroid. And that that's just such a great feeling to have. I mean, But it's polygonal. It, that's true. I mean, it yeah. doesn't have the, the amazing sprite work. And maybe that's sort of... Uh, one of my two sort of jabs at the game is as much as the style in the trailers, you know, in the trailers, how it didn't look that great visually, or it it looked way, way more polygonal. It looks a lot better on the 3DS screen. Like the trailer for this game do not give the game justice, do the game justice. It looks way better on the 3DS itself. Um, and it, and it uses the 3D apparently to some effect, right? Yeah, it they actually to sort take of advantage of that. Yeah, it sort of basically makes the like the background environments are sort of designed around the 3D, yeah. which is kind of cool. So it's sort of it's almost like you're playing in like a shoebox. That's cool, almost. Which yeah. it, it it's a kind of a cool effect. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, I've been loving the game so far. I'm not too far in. I'm in area four of eight. Oh. So I'm about halfway. Uh, the one thing that a lot of other journals have been saying about this game that I also have to echo. This game is fucking hard. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and it's not so much the level traversal that's hard or even hard puzzles. I actually haven't really gotten stuck anywhere. But some of the Metroid enemies, once you get to the later evolutions of Metroids, they get really fucking difficult because... Uh, Theta Metroids and so on? Yeah, because like, so, like when you get to that point, you'll get hit once and you'll lose an energy tank. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, so and not only that, they, I do love their, their fights, even though they do so much damage and they're difficult... What's awesome about them is the the enemies are so varied and they have, like when you fight um, alpha Metroids, for example, they have like five or six different mechanics that you have to uh, sort of memorize or figure out in mm-hmm. order to not get hit. And so I really love sort of figuring out and knowing what to do around each one and how to avoid each mechanic. Like there's a really awesome level of challenge there um, that's really cool, especially for someone like me who likes, who gets really nerdy about that stuff. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm not super far into it, so I'm not going to give it sort of my final verdict until next week. I am writing a review for it uh, that'll go live on Game Moose this week. Um, but I can see for certain that if you've been waiting for a 2D Metroid game, pick this up because it's fucking awesome. Even if you have thrown your 3DS away <laughs> or it's sitting under two inches of dust in your apartment. That's, that's, you that's never pres- <laughs> presently what mine is doing. Because, I mean, it's a year and a half. It's been a year and a half since uh, there's been a 3DS game that I've really loved. And this one, it, it's probably the best 3DS game 
I can pretty much say it now unless it falls apart at the end. It's it's a lot like so much like Zero Mission, and it's it, and in the way that it sort of takes all the elements of the original game and sort of just improves on them. Excellent. It, from the music to the level de- design, the level design is actually really uh, well done, especially over something like Axiom Verge, which we played like early, like last year. Yeah. Um, again, my big beef with Axiom Verge, as much as I liked sort of the the, the weapons and, and things, enemy styles and things like that, was just the way the levels were designed. It, yeah. it felt like there was something off about that game. Yeah. That I don't feel when I play this game. Yeah, I agree with you. I, Axiom Verge I really liked, but certainly there was something that just... Didn't quite feel right about yeah. it. I, I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what it is, but yeah. Yeah. Not only that. It's also really weird. All the new additions they made to the 2D Metroid formula all work really well from the the melee counter, which I know a lot of people have had said online they've had trouble with. I, I didn't. After the first two times I did it, I, I knew right away, like, sort of the timing for each enemy. Like, it, right. it, 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 it works really well. Um, even the Aeon powers are really cool. Like switching between them leads to some actually really cool gameplay. So I hope if they do do another one of these games, like all this stuff still carries over to the next game. Like I, I think they've done a lot of smart things to really sort of uh, improve the 2D Metroid formula, which is really cool. Um, the only beef I other have so far is that you can't play this fucking game with the D-pad. What? Yeah, you have to use the circle pad because uh, the D-pad is used to select okay. between Aeon powers. All right. That's the only that's my only qualm with the game because again, you're try the the 360 degree aim is awesome where you don't have to just aim in a 90 uh, sorry, a, yeah, 90 degree angle every time. You can just sort of free aim around the ceiling, but it's really hard to do when you have to use the circle nub on the 3DS and not not the D-pad. So that's that's my only gripe and if that's my only gripe, I mean Again, it's a pretty good game so far. So I'm going to talk about that more next week, as long as as well as my review. So check out my review this week. I'm also reviewing something else this week, but I I can't talk about it yet. No, so, you can't. So yeah, um, th- yeah, both of those will go up this week for sure. Cool. So that's sort of it for what we've been playing. But speaking of Nintendo, there was a Nintendo Direct guys oh, this week. There's so much news to talk about from this thing. So let, let's is get... Is there, though, into like, it. is there anything really, really remarkable? Actually, yeah, there are some remarkable things. Uh, okay. So let's get into it. So we're going to start with the boring stuff out of the way because it's all the 3DS announcements. So Minecraft was announced and released for the 3DS <laughs> on the same day. <laughs> Fucking hell. But it is a new Nintendo 3DS exclusive, so you can't actually play it on the old Nintendo 3DS. Oh, why does Nintendo do shit like this to us? Because uh, the game probably can't run on the old 3DS. I know, but why did they like? Uh, why it's is just there a confusing. Nintendo 3DS? Like, just put it on a fucking uh, fuck it. Well, and, and it's already on Switch. It's just weird yeah. that it, they took them this long to put it on 3DS. Yeah. Like, especially because it was on every platform, including Vita, until now. Does it have 3D enabled on it? That would be interesting. It does have. Uh, I don't know. Actually, it does. It yeah. does. It does. It does. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would be an interesting experience. I haven't heard anyone talk about it. So given I'm given how sure like, it does. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, no. There's games, for example, Hey Pikmin, yeah, yeah. for example, where it's just completely disabled. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure there's like 99% sure there's 3 Or like uh, the, the, okay. the newest Pokemon doesn't have any yeah. 3D in it. Yeah, that's either. true, too. Yeah. Yeah. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Ultra Moon were shown here, but we're not going to talk about them because they didn't really show anything new. They look lame as fuck. Uh, next up, new Nintendo th- uh, 2DS XL models were announced. There's a white and orange version as well as a Pokemon-themed version. The orange version is coming out on October 6th, and the Pokemon version is coming out on November 3rd. The Pokemon one actually looks kind of cool because it looks like a Pokeball. Mm. But man, who's buying it a 3DS at this point? Come on. Like, the ship is yeah. sailed, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I do like orange. Orange is a good color. That That's version one, actually looks kind of One hot. of my favorite colors mm-hmm. is up there. But, yeah, the, the Pokemon one, yeah, I don't know about that one. I mean, I, again, the main reason to go buy them is go play, play Met- Metroid Samus Returns. Go buy that game because it's good. But mm. other than that, like... I don't know. I don't see a reason to go buy a 3DS now if you don't already have one. Next up, Mario Party, the top 100 was announced for 3DS. It brings together mini games from all 10 Mario Party titles onto one cart and launches November 10th. Brock, your reaction this on so video inf- right now. This is so infuriating. Why aren't you bringing this shit to Switch? I know. What? I want to play Mario Party. Why isn't this on a system where you can actually and easily it, play with other people? It's actually got like, well, then again, there hasn't been a good Mario Party in so long, so I have very little faith. No, in it's got all the... I, no, I think what you mean to say is there hasn't been a good Mario Party ever. <laughs> That's wow. not true. Yeah, Two you know? is a 
classic. I was going to say, Mario Party 2 and 3 on, on N64 are both awesome games. Mm, I, I don't know about 3, but 2 I'd take. Yeah, I, but 2 I, is the best one. Yeah. I hate both of you guys. Yeah, uh, after 9, I was so disappointed. Mario Party 10, by the way, was, or 10. was real 10 bad. and 9 were both bad. But 10 was the wor- one where we had ba- Bowser's car, right? Yeah. On the Wii U? Yeah. Yeah, that was awful. Yeah. It, that was that, painful. That game also had six mini games. Yeah. And three of them were as you playing as Bowser. Yeah, so it was really bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Mario Party fans are out there, and the mini games are the best part about Mario Party. But the 3DS is not the right platform no, for this. I like, don't know how you're gonna. How do you play a party game with a handheld? You have to wait. You have to play it via ad hoc. With no. between other other Nintendo 3DS consoles. Nintendo, Nintendo, please just give us a new Mario Party game. Yeah. All right. So that's enough for. 3DS announcements. Now let's talk about Switch stuff because there's some cool Switch stuff. Yeah. But first, Amiibo. So the four D- champions Zelda Amiibo figures re- received a North American release date on November 10th. Uh, they will unlock new helmets in Breath of the Wild when they are used Finally. with unique properties. But we have no idea what they do because they didn't want to talk about it yet. They also, strangely enough, did not announce the release date for the Zelda DLC. Hmm. The, the the Champions Ballad, which is what these are tied to. So I'm guessing hmm. November 10th. Yeah. Because that's when these are coming out. Because they always like to tie them in together. But yeah, who knows? Because they haven't said it yet. Uh, next up, Skyrim on Switch finally has a release date. It's coming on November seventeenth. So get hyped, go kill some dragons. Speaking of Bethesda, they also announced two new games from Nintendo Switch. They announced that Doom and Wolfenstein Two: The New Colossus are coming to Nintendo Switch. That's pretty surprising. That is fucking crazy. When yeah. like when I saw that announcement, I'm like, holy shit, this is crazy. The Doom footage of a side by side on the PS4 and the Switch is like it's incredible. It looks it's so identical. good. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it, uh, yeah. I did not see this coming. I have no idea how they're, they're going to make that work. They did talk about how the Doom. Multiplayer and single player would be separate downloads. Mm-hmm. I ah. think they're still going to be on the same cartridge, but you just have to get two separate downloads if you download it digitally, mm-hmm. which is fine because, I mean, Call mm-hmm. of Duty used to do that for the longest time, and that's sort of to improve performance. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't actually see a problem with them doing that. Seems the Switch is a lot more stronger than we thought. Yeah, especially from third parties. Yeah. So Wolfenstein 2 is actually, even though the game's coming out this year, October 27th, it is not coming out on Switch until next year. We don't know when. They just said 2018. Whereas Doom will be out sometime this holiday. And if Bethesda needed another reason for me to buy Doom again, this is it. Yeah. I'm You're going to do it, eh? I don't think I'd buy either of these games on the Switch. I, I'm definitely going to buy Doom again because I love that game. Mm. I, I think there's a whole audience really that didn't buy Doom that they reached by being on the Switch. There's that too, yeah. And just like anything, Nintendo's moving units. Like, they're selling really, really well. Mm-hmm. So Pretty much everyone they manufacture gets yeah. sold. So, like... If you have a lot of units out there, that means you have a huge install base, and that means third parties want to put their products on your platform. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is not something that happened with the Wii U. No. The, the Wii U was <laughs> no, it's not. collecting they, dust on shelves and Best Buys. and We got Mass Effect 3 on that platform, at least. And that was a plain launch shuttle. That was not them <laughs> reacting to how things were going. I know. Like I just I still think it's funny to think about the fact that like, Mass Effect came to a, a Nintendo console, and it was Mass Effect 3. Yeah. Well, think about it this way. like When the Wii U launched... There were a bunch of titles that were announced that were supposed to take advantage of the Wii U's hardware that were going to come out like weeks or months after. Are you talking about Zelda? A whole <laughs> bunch of them were canceled. Yep. No, no, I'm not talking about Zelda. <laughs> I'm talking about things like, um, uh, well, the Batman Arbor Up Edition came out, but things like uh, uh, the Alien Colonial Marines and a few other things, right? Uh, Alien Colonial Marines never came out on Wii U, though. It was supposed to. That's what I'm saying. Like, they yeah. Were, they, they, like, yeah good when people saw that Wii U wasn't selling, they pulled the plug in all that shit. Yeah. Like... Whereas now, they're adding titles to the Switch. This just tells you that, that Nintendo's got a winner on their hands now and not a loser. Like Yeah, but, like be- Bethesda and Square Enix seem like they're all in on this thing. We're going to get to uh, Square Enix in a bit. That's what I played this week. Octopath. We're gonna talk oh, about Octopath oh. Traveler. It was really good. Yeah. So, okay. Well, let's just stop doing it now, actually, because Project okay. Octopath Traveler. So I got excited about that. It actually looks really awesome. Uh, Project Octopath Traveler received an in-depth look, and while it's still scheduled... Mm-hmm to release sometime in 2018. A demo version was launched on the eShop and you can go play it right now. Like yeah. Brock did, Brock tells all about it. Uh, it's really fun. It's got a great art style. It's like very reminiscent of like Final Fantasy tactics and look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it feels like an old Final Fantasy game. Yeah. Uh, slash like Chrono Trigger. It's really good. It's really supposed to f- uh, evoke that and feel like that. And I mean, mm-hmm. the, the people who are making it are the same people who did Bravely Default, which were also fantastic games and also basically just old Final Fantasy games. Mm-hmm. So it, it totally makes sense that so they would do I'm, this. I'm okay and it's a surprisingly long demo. It's pretty decent. Yeah, There's I, a good amount of game in there. 
Nice. I still haven't gotten a chance to play it yet, but it's so it great. It has a really weird name. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and that's meant to be representative of the, the different branches in the story that the game can go, right? Yeah, because you mm-hmm. follow, follow eight different heroes, and you right. can sort of select which ones you want in your party and, mm-hmm. and sort of go from there. It's almost kind of like uh, Second Dead Setsu 3, where you sort of choose like a certain number of heroes, and th- those are the people's stories you sort of follow. Which is kind of cool because in that game you had like six heroes to choose from, and th- you picked three at the beginning, and then like the game started differently depending on which ones you picked. I do like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I so like I that. think they're trying something it's, similar. It's here. perfect for traveling. Yeah, and it's only coming to Switch. Yep, it's yeah. a Switch exclusive, which is crazy. Count me in, full game. Yeah, between that and Lost Fear, which is also coming from Square Enix mm-hmm. later, um, and some other stuff. Again, Final Fantasy 15 might be coming. Like Square is again, Square's all in on. And this I've game. been playing I Am Set Cinema on the Switch, and it, it feels so good. Like those RPGs work really well on yeah. the Switch. Awesome, I, especially with that game, because the only difference between the two versions, like the PS4 version and that one, is just it runs at 30 frames instead of 60 frames on Switch. Mm-hmm. But that's it. Like, well, for an RPG, like, why does it matter? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. It's not really something I really care about. <laughs> yeah. My, my top down RPGs. Exactly. Speaking of Square Enix, they also announced that Dragon Quest Builders is also coming to Switch. It will launch sometime in spring 2018. That's a good, that's a good fit. Yep. It's just like Minecraft. Yeah. Except it's Dragon Quest. With Dragon Quest and fucking kids go crazy for that shit too. And we also know that Dragon Quest 11 is coming to Switch next year in North America too. Yes, so like, yes, yes, Dragon yes, Quest is coming. Yes. Can we get some like Dragon Quest merch at a, um, a fast food restaurant? Can, can I want to be able to go buy like slime jellies at like Burger King or something? Now you know what the, all the TGS announcements that are happening this week. Yeah, the slime jelly promotion. That's yeah. funny. That's the name of one of my sex moves. Even though uh, Dragon Quest Eleven's already out in Japan, so we're not going to get any of those. <laughs> Drew is looking down at his shoes and. Uh... As he should. about leaving the podcast <laughs> after that comment. No, no, Ryan. <laughs> no, <laughs> just move on. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about Arcade Archives, you guys. Yeah. After, as you can tell, it's already dark outside, so we, we can't hide it anymore. Yeah. All right. So Arcade Archives will now be expanding uh, to include Nintendo-made arcade titles, starting with Mario Brothers on September 27th. Other games they announced as part of this partnership include Versus Super Mario Brothers, Versus Balloon Fight, Versus Ice Climber, Versus Pinball, and... Versus Clue Cool Land. Fuck this. Did give you me say an Versus e-show. Ice Climber? Yeah. Oh, no. No, but this is cool. Even though Ice Climbers is bad, it's cool because this is like the first time they've re released Nintendo arcade ports in like officially. Just give me a virtual store. I don't want this. But Arcade Archives also, just I, makes I, Neo Geo games. Suck. Yeah, it's not good. It's not fun. No. But they're okay. I but, like them in Smash. Like, I, yeah. I don't know. That's about it. Yeah. I, I'm just excited because hopefully this finally means we're going to finally get the arcade port of Donkey Kong that just uh, mm. continues to elude us because the NES version just isn't the same. I'm sorry. It just isn't. All right. Uh, next up, Kirby Switch now has an official name. Kirby Star Allies is a 2D action game that allows Curry to, Kirby to recruit his enemies in order to help him through his adventure. Okay. It's coming to Nintendo Switch sometime in 2018. Spring 2018, they said. Nice. As long as it's better it looks cool. than Ooh. Epic Yarn. Yeah. Well, I liked Epic Yarn. Yeah. I did not like Epic Yarn. It was Yarn. just really easy. Yeah. But I, lo- I love the visual style and the storytelling. It's for the fucking game. kids, man. I'm a fucking kid. I know. I have I, toys on the table. I'm, I'm grow up, you guys. I, did, I said that like very... I'm wearing a Luigi <laughs> hat. <laughs> yeah. I've been to your place. I know. I know yeah, I got a lot of toys. Yeah. Sex toys. <laughs> Just because you put your He-Man up your butt doesn't make it a sex toy, man. Actually, I've been, I told you that um, last week. Kind of does. Actually, kind of does. <laughs> I now have the power. Yeah, Judge? Oh, my God. All right, next news story. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 got a release date. It's coming to Nintendo Switch on December 1st. A lot of people were thinking it's gonna get. it was going to get delayed because we hadn't heard about it in forever. Okay. So it's cool that we know that it's coming out. Looks cool. I'm excited to play it. I'm super stoked. There's also like a pro controller that they're doing for Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and it looks really dumb. I don't know why they're doing that, but I'm excited to play the game. It looks cool. Uh, next up, Snipper Clips Plus Cut It Out Together was announced. It's an expansion for the original Snipper Clips with new stages, challenges, and features. It's available as a standalone title, as DLC for the original game if you bought it at launch, or it's coming to store shelves, finally. It's coming on November 10th. Get hyped. Snipper Clips is a cool game especially if you have another person to play it with. Next up, Super Mario Odyssey got a console bundle announced. It will include a digital copy of the game, a Mario Red Joy-Con controller set, as Ooh. well as a Mario-themed case. It will retail for $499 Canadian dollars, and it will launch on October 27th. 
honestly, if you're going to pick up a Switch hol- a bundle this holiday, it's probably the one to get. Because, mm. I mean, it's already got the game you want in it. It comes with a Switch. It comes with a case, which you also want. So, yeah. Cool. And that's it for the Nintendo Direct announcements. Everyone get hyped. I, I, really, like, I really like what I'm seeing here. Yeah. It looks I'm, pretty I'm, sick. I pulled up a, an image of it. I wish it was red and green, though, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Like Mario from Mario, Mario and Luigi. Luigi. Yeah. yeah. We, is Luigi even in this game, though? I we don't know. Like, I don't think we know yet. No, he is. He definitely is. I feel like we saw something of him in one of the demos or Probably. something. Probably. Uh, I think they've only mentioned. I, I may once. have. I may have made that up in my own mind. I don't know. Oh, spoilers! Yeah, you also got to see Mario's nipples too. So that's that's something there. Yeah, I'm Mario's, very excited about. Mario's nipples give me all kind of feelings. Yeah. Also, he's not a plumber. Also, he's, he's not, not a plumber, a plumber anymore. anymore. Not a plumber anymore. Nintendo did announce that in fact he is not a plumber. He's no longer a plumber. He but he plums when he needs to is what they told, said. Well, apparently never. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. All right, so that's Is it for that the... like a, like a sex thing? Like a, are you talking no, about no, 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 don't get your head out of the gutter, Drew. Right? Stop bringing this podcast <laughs> down with just, your sex It just joke. seemed like a natural place to go. Nope, it's like we nope. plums what he needs to. I just because the sun's <laughs> down doesn't mean you guys can make sex jokes he, all the time. He, he fixes fixes those clogged drains. Mm. Why? Because, well, I feel like he's a pretty hairy guy, him and Luigi, so a lot of hair gets stuck in the... No, he's not, though. Without the shirt. Oh, yeah, that's he's, right. He's got a... I have more hair on my chest, and that's kind of yeah, weird. Yeah. You'd think he'd have a big full... Full chest hair set. No, no. Yeah. Of course, the internet no, took pictures like, of this like by me. store. He looks like he week. waxes. He's like a baby. Look, I, I don't really got anything going on there, too. Wow. Yeah. I got a little something, something. That's why yeah. they call me daddy online. <laughs> and let's move on. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't uh, want to know, and it's probably better not to ask. Yeah, that's, yeah. All right, so let's move on to just wrap up the last, last set of news <laughs> stories this week so we can get out of here. I feel sad. Uh, so... Next news story, at the Apple iPhone X reveal event, that game company announced their new game. It's called Sky. It's a launch exclusive to iOS, but it's coming to other platforms later, they said. It's a multiplayer adventure game similar to Journey that supports play with up to seven additional anonymous players. The game is scheduled to launch on iOS later this year with other platforms coming at a later date. We don't know when. So these are the journey people and et cetera? And they, yeah, and they're making a new game that you fly through the sky and it looks like they're a journey. And it's for the, it, for the iPhone? Yeah, it's an iPhone exclu- it's, launch exclusive. Oh, boy. Is yeah. it an AR game? Because I know that iPhone's pushing big on that, too. Nope. No. No, no, no AR. Either. It just, yeah, it seems like a weird fit. Yeah. I'm excited, though, because the game looks cool. <laughs> and, again, I really like Journey. So Every time Apple gets play. serious about video games, it doesn't go well. Well, Infinity Blade was pretty dope. Infinity Blade was really dope. But that was an Apple getting serious about video games. That was, I thought that uh, was their first like push for that. Though. That was really that their was, first that was, push, that, that wasn't them, though. It was Unreal. That was like there was Epic That's, doing that. Yeah, but they, that they, was an exclusive. They, that was like their push. They showed that off at the conference. I was going like, to say, yeah. games yeah. get bigger now. They're like, fuck Angry Birds. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every year, yeah. Yeah. Every year actually, the, every year that there was a new iPhone event, they showed whatever the newest iteration of Infinity Blade. Blade was. That was, was a big. It deal. was pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah, it was a fun game. Okay. Next up, speaking of fun games, Okami HD has been announced for PS4 and Xbox One as well as Steam. It will release on December 12th. How many different versions of this game are there going to be? A million. I've still never played it. Well, this might be the version. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's yeah. awesome. You've never played Okami? Okami's I haven't. Good. You got yeah, to play it's it. Good. It's really good. It's one of the best Zelda games that's not a Zelda game. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's I, I heard Zelda. there was a paintbrush. and There, there is. There's that's how you painting. defeat enemies. Yeah. It's with your paintbrush. You paint shit. Yeah. It's cool. cool. I'm into it. Calligraphy and shit. Also, the game will support 4K visuals on all three platforms and will contain all the same features the 360 PS3 version did was because there was a 360 and PS3. Sorry, just a PS3 port. This is, this is a Wii game first. No, right? it was a PS2 game PS2. first. PS2 game first. Jesus. Then a Wii game. Then a PS3 game. It didn't come to Xbox. I keep saying Xbox 360, but it didn't come there before. Now it's on all three next-gen platforms. It's a beautiful game because it's all like watercolor drawn yeah. like hand drawn like the whole game is hand drawn it's like a 200 200 hour game as well so if you want a game to get the most bang for your buck it's okami because there's a lot to fucking do in that game yeah though odds are by now you've probably fucking played it because there's 300 versions of it is yeah it coming to switch it isn't is it, it is not coming no. to switch it or, or a it nintendo could. console it could eventually I mean, so I'm gonna hold on. Brock, why don't you just pull out your Wii or your Wii U? Because there's a um, Wii version. Perfect. It uses but motion I'm, controls. I'm afraid of the amount of dust on that thing there's, at this point. It, it uses the waggle quite well, actually. Mm. Actually, uh, my my Wii U was taken away from me because uh, the fire department said it was a fire hazard. Um, As they should. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm of course kidding. It was a joke. Next up, it was actually a child. Yeah. 
Jesus. <laughs> Sean! No! That was a whole joke on Twitter this week, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. A, that was a solid goof. I have no child. I have no children. <laughs> Especially if you're my child and you're watching this, I have no children. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds about right. Uh, All right, then. So uh, next story, Epic Games, speaking of Epic Games, yeah. has announced that a new PvP mode is coming to Fortnite <laughs> called Fortnite Battle Royale. So, tell me if you've heard this one before. It's a 100-player single-map survival mode, and if it sounds familiar, it's because that's exactly what Player Unknown Battlegrounds uh, is. Yeah, that sounds familiar, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's now out for early access members, which is anyone who owns Fortnite at this point. I mean, that sounds interesting. It sounds cool. It sounds like a, like a good application of the game. I still... I, I, there's part of me that really wants to like this game, but everyone tells me that it's not that much fun to play. I was told I would absolutely hate it, so yeah. I have never touched it. It's, it's yeah. all co-op PvE. Yeah, no. So I, I Except do, for this I, mode, which I, is a 100-player PvP map, which I, it sounds cool. I do like the idea of co-op PvE. I do like the idea of building forts and shit like that, but I don't know. Like I've just heard so many bad things about it. Yeah, and what's cool about this mode, too, is that unlike Player Unknown Battlegrounds, you can act, it takes all the build elements from Fortnite and brings it into that experience, so you can build your own fortress and just hang out there and yeah. pick off other players. That's Which is kind of neat. Which is cool. Yeah. Uh, next up, Nintendo has announced that the SNES Classic edition contrary to the original announcement will continue to be produced and sold in 2018 it's coming back uh nintendo has also announced that sometime in the summer of 2018 the nes classic edition will also be returning to source shelves and we'll hear more about it. its release date details sometime next year yeah it's also coming back oh uh, that's why reggie urged people not to go pay fucking two three hundred dollars for yeah. nes classic because they're apparently coming back although it's kind of <laughs> It kind of rums me the wrong way that they told people this is never coming back, and they just say it's coming yeah, back. Yeah, and then people paid five hundred dollars for one. I think it like was never coming back. Now. Now. Are you kidding me? Do you know how many times Kiss has done a farewell concert? This is not the first time this shit has gone. Do you know down. how many times they keep saying it's the final Halloween? Yeah. Even though it's not, there's, there's still, a new there's, Halloween there's movie a new now one coming. coming out. They said it's going to be the last one. The last time Jamie Lee Curtis is going to come uh, appear. That's She's actually probably back. not wrong. Yeah. Well, I mean, they said that the last time too. <laughs> That's true. Um, I mean, Friday the 13th Part 4 was the final chapter, even though there were six more movies after that. That is fair. All right. Uh, next up, we're, we're, we've got our last mm-hmm. two news stories now. Spotted on Atlas's Tokyo Game Show 2017 live stream page, because they have a live stream page over on their website. Fuck yeah, they do. Just like there, we do. There was a banner and advertising <laughs> Dragon's Crown Pro on PS4, stating that on the banner would sort of link to a pre-order page where you could pre-order the limited edition as well as just a regular version of the game. It has since been removed at this time. It pretty much sounds like that's a shoe in for Tokyo Game Show this week, on, yeah. on, which starts on the 21st. Yeah. Get hype, motherfuckers, because uh, as... Old school Game Moves people know from listening to, like, Game Moves episode, like, 10, I fucking love Dragon's Crown. Yeah, you stuck around since then. Number one, good on you. Yeah. Number two, yeah. Ryan likes Dragon's Crown. I like Dragon's Crown a lot. I, 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 I like Dragon's Crown a lot, too. Uh, but, but only I, for I, the art you like that game. Uh, no, I, 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 do, I love the art in that game. I liked how it played. I just... I. There's some ethical quandaries about playing that game. I know, I, but the idea... Or, or moral ones, not ethical ones. But it goes both ways. That's sort of the way I look at it, where, like, the ethical uh, things people were talking about, yeah. like, were were sort of the way people were dressed. But, uh, again, that same level of dress were, were applied to both males and females in yes. that game. Yeah. So that's yeah. why There's it doesn't bother me. Because, again, that game is very much mm. inspired by D&D artwork from the 80s, is essentially what the look of that game is supposed to invo- evoke feels of. Which, which is just really a really cool art style to me. And plus, after playing Odin's Fear Life Riser in uh, 2016, which was the, the remake uh, of the Noah Wears uh, Odin's Fear, which is the same company who makes Dragon's Crown, like seeing that in action, how beautiful that was, I can't wait to see this game on PS4 because Dragon's Crown already was a really looking good looking game on PS3. Like, I can't wait to play that. It's a beautifully, PS4. like, hand animated, fantastic yeah. looking game. Yeah. The whole game is hand drawn and it looks gorgeous. Yeah. So I can't wait to play it's it. Plus all, the gameplay. It's not all traditionally animated, but a lot of it is. So. Yeah. It's it's a 2D brawler RPG hybrid, similar to like the D and D arcade games. Or uh Golden Axe. Or or Golden Axe, but the, there's way more RPG elements than Golden yeah. Axe. Yep. There, there's a hand drawn game we can talk about on the show next week. Spoilers. That's not a spoiler. Spoiler for next week's next week's episode. So you can just guess away. It, no, that's that's what we call a tease. Yeah, it's that's true. There, yeah. there is something. Yeah, uh, tickle the toes to let them know what's what's to come next. And 
Last news story, and this one's kind of sad, That's actually. That's a weird thing to say. So. <laughs> <laughs> Those things that come in my mouth are weird things to say. So I forgot to pull up a, a do a write-up for this, but Gearbox has announced, in fact, that the fall, pa- the quote-unquote fall update for Battleborn will be the game's last update, essentially. There will be no more patches to sort of do balance or add new character or anything like that. Fuck, that's year and a half piss later. off the seven people still playing that game. To be fair, I think that that game actually has a dedicated fan base, and I... Uh, even though Gearbox has done some things that we're not always super happy about, nope. I have to actually applaud them for the way they've sort of handled Battleborn, even though it hasn't been the success they wanted to. Every single month they've added something to this game and sort of kept that audience that they do have happy. So I think that they actually did a good thing sticking with this game for as long as they did. Because, I mean, it, unlike uh, 2K with Evolve, they didn't pull the plug right away with that game because Evolve just became a wasteland very, very quickly because of that, it didn't yeah. get the same support. Well, let me say this. Um, Gearbox, I'll never fucking forgive you for what you did with Colonial Marines. So fuck your stupid battle board game. I'm glad it failed. <laughs> Maybe next time you'll realize, hey, we've got a hit on our hands with Borderlands. Maybe you should fucking stick to it, you idiots. You're mean, man. I know. I would, I would, I, I'm, I'm with Drew here. I really want that. Uh, what you might call it? Three. Borderlands, Borderlands, three. Borderlands three. three. Also, like, you know how strongly I feel about the Aliens franchise, and they were like, yeah, we're going to make the best, Randy Patrick, we're going to make the best fucking Aliens game. It's going to be so good. You know, like, it's going to be like direct sequel to Aliens. You're going to have the smart rep. Fuck that. I don't know why Randy Pitchford yeah. sounds like that. There's also, um, speaking of Randy Pitchford, actually, uh, on IGN, they actually posted an unfiltered this week with Randy Pitchford talking all about his career at Gearbox, as well as they, they talk about Aliens, Colonial Marines, as well as a bunch of other things. So yeah. it's actually a really good conversation because they did it in two parts where, like, the first part was sort of Randy Pitchford's early career, and then his later career was a, was a week later. So I actually think they're actually, like, it's a really interesting conversation to listen to. So mm. I encourage people to go listen to that. Unlike the whole we're talking We're recording outside, here! They're, exci- they're just as excited about Unjured Fuck Unfiltered ass. as I am, so... There you go. That, that's her. That's her uh, final salute to Battleborn. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Battleborn, may you burn in hell forever. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, also, they did talk about the fact that the team, basically, who was working on Battleborn, like that, that was left, is now onto the new, quote unquote, highly anticipated but unannounced mm-hmm. title from Gearbox. Yeah, it's Borderlands Three. It's probably. Bo- but that's the thing, though. How can a title? I told this to Brock earlier. How can a title be highly anticipated if people have it if it hasn't been announced? How yeah, would you know it, about it? They haven't formally announced it, but they have said they're working on it. Like Randy has said that they're working on it. They even said announced it at a panel. So it's like yeah. that game's like, already been announced. Yeah, we know they're working on it. But that's not an announcement in you know marketing lingo. I still mm-hmm. yeah. We need an official announcement. It's too much. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah. All right, so let's wrap up uh, with our new releases this week. Uh, we got some good ones this week. Some weird ones as well. So Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite out this week. Oh, I'm not playing hyped. that game. I played oh. that demo and fucking hated it. Like, that demo did not play well. No. I, I Again, I've been watching videos of the actual game because some streamers have it. The game itself, like the fighting, was the fun part from the demo. And from what I'm seeing, they've improved on what we saw in the demo in the full version. So I'm excited to at least see the the, the versus action because that that's kind of cool. Yeah. Also, did you see the uh, guys? Either you see the collector's edition that people have been receiving. No. Because people have been doing unboxings with it this week, and it's fun. Brock, you do you remember the the? Is that the three hundred dollar one without the game? It's the three hundred one dollar one that didn't come with the game, but mm-hmm. now it does. Oh. And it has four very detailed figures, which all look really cool. And it comes with Infinity Gems, and <laughs> the Infinity Gems look so funny because they basically look like Easter eggs. Whereas in the original like uh, thing, it looked like they were really detailed and sort of like almost like they had like cube like shapes, but no, they're like dumb Easter eggs that light up, and mm. you can't even pull them out of the the case they come in because they that's how they light up because they oh. can't move them. So, this sounds dumb. Yeah. I'm trying to look it up. The figures themselves look really cool though. Like I, I heard from people who did un- actually receive one part of uh, the sort of the review process that. The, the figures themselves are worth the price of admission, and it almost doesn't matter. That you yeah, the, the figures they, do look really the cool. Infinity Stones. How big are the figures? They're big. They're like... Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh, okay. They're really detailed, too. Like, they're really... Like, like they look like... Ah, Drew's figures. showing me here. They look pretty good. Ah, it's just not my, like, first pick of characters, but not bad. Yeah. There's I, some... I take X any day. If you told me there was an X figure, I'd be all over that. Now, if you could only just... If you could get the X edition that came with just X, that would be great. I just don't mm. want Chun-Li. Or, or what if it was a double pack that had zero? What zero I, and X. What am I even fighting for, Ryan? I mean, you just... What, lo- what am I it. even fighting for? Iris, 
What am I even fighting for? It's so good. If you don't get the reference, ladies and gentlemen, go to YouTube and, and Google Mega Man X4 <laughs> voice acting. And I, you'll, I don't get it. I Well, I mean, you just you need to check out those energy weedings because Dr. Wowie. Yeah. 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 Mega Man 8 is also real bad. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, NBA 2K18 out this week. It was out on, on Friday, apparently, as part of the early tip-off edition if you pre-ordered the game, but it's officially out on Tuesday. Uh, Hex, <laughs> the card game, coming to PS4 this week. It looks real good. Uh, SteamWorld Dig 2, coming to coming to Switch this week. There is a Switch game coming this week. Yes. SteamWorld Dig 2. Yeah. Next up, the Lego Ninjago movie video game out this week. In addition to the Lin- Le- Lego Ninjago movie. Yes, exactly. Yeah, also, well. also out this week, which I will be seeing. Yeah, uh, yes, I know For you sure. will. I yeah. love those Lego movies. That yeah. that trailer look actually looks pretty funny. It's got it uh, Dave Franco. It does. Dave, yeah. I like Dave, Dave Franco. I like Dave. I, I like Dave, Dave Franco. Franco. Yeah. I saw the Little Hours. He was pretty good in that. Yeah. yeah. Not what I was expecting. The Little Hours, but still a good movie. Little who? The Little Hours. Oh. It's a really. It's a pretty funny movie. It's it's a little. It's bizarre. It's really weird. It's a period piece. It's a comedy. Um, but it stars like uh, him and like Nick Offerman and Aubrey Plaza and uh, uh, his wife. I can't remember. Uh-huh. I'm forgetting her that name. Like I Alison Brie and uh-huh. a bunch of other really funny people are in it. Um, Fred Armiston. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, it's about it's about a like a a, a, a convent, a nun convent, but the nuns are kind of really fucked up and they're and jerks because they're nuns. Yeah. Uh, next up, Pokemon Poc- Poc- Tournament DX. I'll on Switch this week. It's the port of the Wii U version of Pokken Tournament, except with new stuff. I don't know what's new in it. There's also I, I a demo. I want it. There, there, did you play the demo? No. It's pretty cool. You should download the demo. That's fun. And last but not least, Virtual Console released this week, guys. Pokemon Gold and Sil- Silver is coming to 3DS this week. Well, that would be exciting if it was on the Switch. Yeah. But it, Agreed. But, but it's a Game Boy game. It deserves to be on a Game Boy platform. It but. also deserves to be on the Switch. But Fuck the, you, Nintendo. But the Switch is a home console, Drew. Well, I no, want to play not. Pokemon They keep Gold. talking about it like it is. So. I play it on the go. Yeah. I I docked it like maybe an hour. I, I actually would be... always have it on my hands. I would actually be more excited for this if it was Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which were the remakes of Heart yeah. uh, Gold and Silver, but... I didn't play those. Yeah, these just aren't as good. They're the, the GBA Ho- Yeah, Ho- Ho- I know the Gold and Silver. I don't remember the remakes. Uh, th- well, these ones that are coming are the original Game Boy ones. Yeah. And the Game Boy remakes are the better ones. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Just like well, they always do that, you know, there's like... The whole series. I just want yellow. It still boggles the mind to me that they still never ever sold ga- uh, Game Boy Advance Virtual Console games on 3DS, but they sold them on Wii U instead. Yeah, that was really bizarre. Even though that, like, if you were part of the Ambassador program, you got ten of them. Yes. On your 3DS, which yes. was so bizarre. That was the only way you could get Metroid Fusion on your Game Boy uh, DS uh, or 3DS. Yeah. DS. It's so weird. 3DS. Yeah. Yeah, through the, the Ambassador program. Yeah. A- AKA, sorry, you spent all that money on a console that wasn't so good. Three hundred and twenty-nine Canadian dollars, actually. Yeah, I, I paid for that. That's then. a lot of scrilla. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, so that's gonna wrap up this week's show. But before we go, true plugs go. Uh, I'm at D McMill on Twitter. Uh, we, we have a website. We I don't do know have if a you website. guys heard about this. It's called uh, game moosecom um, What's that website again, Drew? Uh, it's game moosecom uh, there's there's things there's written things there and there's also some videos and stuff. There's the video version of this podcast, for example, is there the one that you're watching slash listening to my, right now? My destiny review will be there shortly. Uh, it's the, happening. The the first episode of uh, of uh, uh, RoboFlix you can watch there. Yep, game <laughs> game dash moose dot com slash video. Yeah, it was where I talk about uh, my RoboCop and uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna do one on Westworld next. Which is what I'm working on right now. It's happening. Yeah, that, that's that's both the movie and the TV series. I will be discussing Ooh. both at the same yeah. time. At the same time, yeah, yeah. I have like a little, you know, a little two on one nice situation. Nice. Uh, is that a sex thing? I guess. <laughs> But like in video form. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot of other things happening. You Where know. can people find you on Twitter as well? Uh, I'm at D McMill on Twitter. They can hear by many insane ramblings and musings at 2 a.m. You've been waiting. doing more of that lately. Yeah. No, it was like one o'clock in the morning and I'm waiting for a fucking Destiny loading screen to, to come up and I'm probably pretty tired and maybe possibly slightly inebriated. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got Oh, by that. the way, um, big thanks to everybody who came out to uh, Trek Timber at uh, Farside in. Uh, 
in Toronto. Uh, we had a good time, and uh, I think I'm going to uh, try and hook up with those guys and do some more stuff over at the Turbo Video Zone, which is where people drink beers at a really solid, fun, funny bar and watch really stupid movies on uh, VHS. Turbo! I want to go there. Yeah. Let's yeah. go on a date. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, sure. It's happening. Yeah. Uh, Brock, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at B-R-O-C-K-M-C Laugh. Lynn. Laughlin. And BrockstarGaming.com. I'll also be all week in the shed with your father doing things, and we'll tell you about when you're older. All right, then. It's something He's to look forward to. He's a big carpentry. <laughs> I mean, every week. It's something Building different. a bird shed. Uh, uh, right. Bird shed? What the fuck is a bird shed? Is that a Don't shed? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <shit's> We're <laughs> building a shed inside another shed. It's for birds. It's, it's deep, Morty. Oh my it's, it's fucking deep. god! It's deep. Deeper than me and me. Oh. You and I could ever know. Wubba dum dum dum. Sure. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> As for me, you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Turfer. That's T U R F O R D. You also find me at the Game Moose YouTube page, game moosecom video, where I unbox. If you're watching the video right now, these amiibo and this Metroid Samus Returns Special Edition. If you're Listening to the audio, just imagine me with a hand pointing at the amiibo, the Metroid amiibo, and Metroid. That's, that's very well. visual. Thank you. <laughs> I'm doing my best here. You've done um, this before. And yeah. again, my Metroid Samus Returns review will be out this week. I also have something else that'll be out this week. Yeah, I'm very excited for that. And last but not least, you can find me streaming Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every night. Uh, sorry, uh, every week it'll be great. Yeah, this yeah. week uh, I've got some classic games lined up. Where, where, how do we? Where do we? How do we find? Oh, I'm glad you asked. So you can either go to we, one of two places. Actually, where do we? You can go to game moosecom slash live. Boom, Drew. You should really know where we're going to be presenting. Yeah, okay, you're asking you should, questions that you should know the answer to. But I'm the one. <laughs> but I'm the I'm the one who messed up. Yeah, I know. I'm kidding. And also mixer.com slash game Yeah. Either or, either or, we'll get you there. Yep. It's cool. So come join me, hang out. We'll, yep. we'll play some cool video games. I'm very excited. Again, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time is just stream a couple nights every week. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Uh, so again, it'll mostly be retro games this week, and then next week we'll play something else. Mm-hmm. Get hyped. Um, last but not least, you can find the Game Moose podcast on Twitter as well for all our tweets, game, da- uh, game underscore moose underscore cast, as well as on Facebook at facebook.com slash game moose podcast and if you don't subscribe go to like itunes or the google play store or like literally anywhere else you can find podcasts like we're there podcast services around the globe speaker and all that kind of shit and and write some fan mail son yeah i, I want to hear some fan no no, mail. no 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 the fan mail all goes to uh at sean capri on twitter <laughs> oh perfect Sorry. well send him our fan mail send him our fan mail yeah. in fact yeah. everyone write write him right now just a bunch of fan we mail get the guy on the show we we keep sean He's we're coming to get, Toronto. We're going to get you on the show. He is. He's no, but we got to do it before then. Yeah, we're it's gonna happening. Do it but we're, yeah, we're going to have oh, him physically. How many in this times space. can we really have Sean Capri on the show? As many times as I fucking want, which all right. is all the goddamn like, time. I like hearing his voice. Yeah, yeah. me too. Brock Hard, baby. You can also check out his show because now that we're pu- pimping him. It's at, at uh, We the Gamer Cast as well yeah. on YouTube. Just search for We the Gamer Cast. It it's comes good, up right away. Yeah, he's he just started doing video, and they're all, they've all been pretty good. Yeah. So go check them out. They're not as good as ours. Well, clearly. Well, clearly. Duh. I mean, we're, we're only 90. Now, to be fair, he's got a leg up on us because he's over the 100 episode hump. Yeah. We haven't hit yeah, that yet. We haven't, yeah. It's happening soon, though. Yeah. Six more weeks. I'm excited. We got we got things to discuss. Uh, well, speaking of which, we should we should, we should start playing this right now. Extra Life. It's happening. Yes. We don't know when yet. We don't know when yet, but, but. Um, <laughs> right, if, if you want to help donate to our Extra Life team, send money to Ryan Turford. Uh, go to Extra Life's... Extra-life.org and then search for Ryan Turford. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're going to have a page on the, the website soon that links to all that stuff. Yeah. And we're going to go over um, all of our... Dates our, and like, times. Dates and times. Uh, incentives as yeah. well. Those are going to be those things. So we're going to talk about all that in the coming weeks. Look forward to our 24-hour live stream. Brock, you can't fall asleep again then. I, I won't. That? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be drawing photos of people that are watching. Do Man. you know how photos work? I, I'm drawing I'm drawing <laughs> cartoons of the people watching. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a very talented in my bedroom cartoonist. Are you, are you trying to say oh. that you're a big fan of In Another World with a smartphone? Because in that anime, the character main character has a magical power that would allow you <laughs> to take a photo with his smartphone, and then he can take the photo from his smartphone, use his finger, and then physically print it on a piece of paper. No, I'm just going to have people tweet me their photo of them watching the stream, and I'll draw their face. <laughs> it's not the same. 
It's not how photos it. work. End it now. <laughs> All right. So for Drew McMillan and Brock McLaughlin, I'm Ryan Turver. This has been episode 94 of the Game Moose Podcast. Only six more weeks till 100. Uh, so much and we're exciting. out.